everybody and welcome back. Uh, this is a really really short update video um, on the Robin 3D printer side of things. Uh, I just finished building this Robin printer here and um, it's kind of a special one because this Robin here was made with all of this green filament and this filament is actually recycled. Um, I think there were yogurt vats or something um, and uh, they've been recycled, they've been turned into PLA and um, yeah, now you can print stuff uh, with material that has already been used once before. Um, basically making the eco footprint of a 3D printer even better. And um, the filament that I've been using here is, um, this is from 3DK Berlin. Um, it is this kind of greenish color. It's, it's really hard to describe because uh, it looks greenish, but if you put a light behind it, it almost shines through white and it has this uh, weird luster to it. Uh, and yeah. It's really hard to work with uh, because it is so incredibly hard. It is um, very easy to break. So this is just this little piece here. And although it seems to be really pliant right now, if you hit it on an unsuspecting edge and you give it too much of a bend, it will just break right away. And the second thing about this filament is if you're not careful it's going to warp after the print. I've never had this before. Uh, you print stuff, you just leave it on the table, it's cold, it has been cold for, I don't know, half a day and as soon as it gets moisture it is so hygroscopic that the upper side of it that gets in touch with the moisture um, is just going to, well, bend while the underside that is still on the build platform doesn't do that. So it's a really unusual material to work with. Um, it has very good um, properties. It is very hard. It is um, very unyielding, but it is just so strange. And it took me like forever to make all of these parts for the 3D printer. Uh, because I had to print it relatively slow um, with under 40 millimeters per second um, at, I don't know, 215, 220 degrees. Um, but I had to print everything with 40% infill. So this took like forever at 0 0.3 millimeters. Um, but in the end, the result is quite nice. Um, I will have to do some, um, well, some cleanup work um, because it is so fragile. I broke two parts, so I'm going to have to redo them. But it's not that important right now because I really needed to get this one done because um, it's going to go on an exhibition at a local mall um, tonight. We're, we're going to set that up tonight and it's going to be on a display and we're going to show it off. Um, during the day tomorrow and yeah we we basically took the chance we wanted to have something that was made from recycled material because um, the the whole exhibition is about um, recycling and upcycling and working with uh, used things and just making something nice of it and we wanted to display this thing and we wanted to have a 3d printer that could run and print and work and um, yeah so that's why this one was built um, I wouldn't have done it if 
somebody had just asked me would you like to do this uh, it would be no this material is just not the right stuff now that I've done it it works out very well but it does have some really bad drawbacks uh, but the whole printer build was kind of a I don't know kind of a bad thing to go through because um, the threaded rods that I bought are the worst that I've ever had before. Um, this fan is extremely loud and has an extremely annoying vibration to it and I'm gonna have to, I'm just gonna have to put that one in the trash or use it for something else because um, it, it just it just wobbles all over the place and even with this setup that is really rigid and has a low mass um, this thing is actually shaking my extruder um, so yeah I didn't well it didn't go through as well as I wanted to. Um, I had planned on three weeks of getting it set up, getting it built, getting all the parts. Um, yeah, then I turned sick for half a week and um, everything was all over the place. But, well, now that it's done, it is a really, really nice printer. Um, apart from the fact that it needs some more work, like getting the broken parts fixed, getting another threaded rod that is a better quality. The build platform, usually I have them machined. I don't know why I ordered some that that weren't machined to be flat. Uh, this is just awful. You can see it on the uh, on the z-axis here. It's just all over the place. Um, the auto leveling of the printer is doing a fine job, but it's just, yeah, like I said, it's all over the place. But it's a nice printer, it's gonna go on display. Um, I think it will work out fine tomorrow. Um, the print quality is, given all the circumstances, pretty good. It does have some Z-axis wobble, it has some vibration, uh, but all of that can be fixed. So afterwards, it's gonna be a nice printer. It is just going to be really, really fragile, um, which is one of the things that I try to avoid when I make a printer because um, um, these printers are supposed to be um, used a lot, they're supposed to travel a lot, and uh, they're supposed to last long. And I'm not sure that this material is going to be so great for that. But, yeah, that is it. I just wanted to show it off before I put it on display, so you guys can see it first. Uh, it's just these, the standard stuff that's on the internet, nothing special about it. Um, all the models I use are the models that are available. Um, yeah, nice printer. It was a lot of work. It didn't turn out as good as I had wished. But um, I guess that's just what happens from time to time. Oh, one thing that is nice about it, this printer is with all um, high quality TMC um, stepper controllers, so it is a very silent. Uh, and um, it uses more power than the others uh, and with this bed I can actually go that one extra step and maybe I'm gonna make it um, a heated build platform not sure about that yet but it would be doable so thank you very much for watching and bye bye